All right, y'all. Well, I am back with a follow-up video on this uh, HP 6038A auto ranging power supply. Um, some of you guys might remember this supply. Um, I did a video on repairing this. Um, it had a bad uh, filter capacitor for the 20 volt unregulated supply, um, which uh, also gets that provides all the bias voltages for the unit. Um, so it had a fault where the whole display all the LEDs were lit up and the seven segment uh, LEDs also were all lit up and um, yeah it was just due to that bad cap which we replaced then I did another video where I did some performance testing um, on the unit and it looked it performed really well everything looked really really good um, so I had mentioned that I'd like to calibrate it but uh, you need a GPIB controller to calibrate it, and I didn't have one. Um, but I did get one in, um, and uh, this is the type that I got, this um, one from National Instruments, the NI-488.2. Um, came with uh, the GPIB to USB converter. Um, and uh, software to um, control it from your PC and uh, yeah so right now I, I actually have it connected and um, I um, have it set to 5 volts and 5 amps and I did that all through the software um, so I can give you guys a quick example of that here Um, real quick, but yeah, so in the, the service manual provides you all the commands. If you've never used a GPIB before, like myself, it gives you a list of commands. So, you know, you're, you're, um, communi so you communicate with the instrument properly. So for example, to, um, to give it, to set the voltage, you write V set and then the voltage. So we'll do that now. Let's set it to 10. And then just click right, I believe. And there it is. So it's pretty simple, and it so far at least. And um, we can set the current to so give that a try. So that's just the I set, and then the current. All right. And there you go. So that's just a little quick uh, test, um, just to show you guys how it works. Um, and so I am going to uh, check the service manual to see the calibration procedure. Um, I uh, I believe I have most of the equipment to perform the calibration. You need an oscilloscope, um, a digital multimeter obviously, um, an electronic load. Uh, all, it says you need a logic pulser and a signature analyzer, which I definitely don't have. Um, uh, also a current probe. Don't have that. Um, some power resistors. Oh, well, those those you need those if you don't have the electronic load. Okay. Um, oh, but yes, you need some very very accurate current monitoring shunts. Like for example, uh, a 0.1 ohm plus or minus 0.04 percent 25 watt resistor. I sure as hell don't have that. Um, so yeah. Uh, but then there's some test resistors of much, lot, a lot less, uh, in a, a lot, uh, yeah, 5% tolerance. I'm sure I can dig some of those up. Um, but yeah, so eh, we'll see. I'll see what we can do, you know. Um, I did have this thing hooked up to, during some of the performance testing, my, um, 
3478A, which is calibrated for the most part. And what I mean by that is I, um, I have a very accurate 10 volt DC um, source. So I, can, I calibrated that thing up to 10 volts. But I mean, you know, the range is obviously greater than that. So, you know, I can only do so many points, so to speak. But, you know, it extrapolates out a little bit. It's just, you know, if you, the greater your range you calibrate for, the more accurate it's going to be for that range. So, you know, it, but I think it, my, what I'm saying is, is that when I had it hooked up to that multimeter, it was very accurate. Um, so I don't know how much adjustment this thing's going to need, but just be cool to check it out using the GPIB. Um, so we'll see what we can do. Uh, but yeah, let me look at the service manual and we'll go from there. Okay, so we're at the, uh, I looked over the service manual. Um, so we're going to try to do a couple of the, uh, calibration, uh, procedure. Um, starting with this first step, which is the voltage monitor zero calibration. Okay, so this is the setup for both the voltage um, monitor zero and common mode. Well, the common mode includes hooking up a power supply to the um, to the outputs, but right now this is just asking us to short the output terminals, which we've done with a much longer than needed uh, lead. But um, yep. Um, I'm not sure the GPIB doesn't really seem necessary yet for this step. It's literally just has us set the um, outputs to uh, zero, both the current and voltage, I'm sorry. Um, and uh, yeah, then you have a, um, uh, a um, one kilo, one, 1K resistor connected to um, V monitor, which technically is pin three on that uh, A2J3 connector, um, which I hate probing on. And in fact, you're really supposed to have a connector um, to attach to that to make it easier, but I don't have that style connector. You'd think that maybe HP would supply you with one, but nope. So um, I am just going to be looking for those um, points on the main board and probing from there. That's all I'm doing here. So, um, yep, and I've got that uh, currently hooked up to my multimeter. So, um, yeah, let's start with that first uh, that first um, adjustment. Okay, so for that first uh, first adjustment, voltage monitor zero calibration, it's asking us to adjust R22 to zero, plus or minus 20 microvolts. So that is very precise. Um, and I my um, HP. Um, meter and just about get you there. I don't know. Sorry about this. I don't know how well it's going to do this, but we'll find out. Sorry. Alright, so you guys, oh my god. Alright, so you guys can see that pretty well. And, um, yeah. So, let's, uh, actually. Yeah. Okay. So, we should be. Right now, we're looking at 2.5 millivolts. Alright, so. Um, let's try to adjust that down the best we can. Hmm. 
So I just need to find the pot. I think I found it. Oh, that's going too high. All right, we know what direction is. Okay, so now we're at roughly nine or nine hundred microvolts, roughly. Okay, and it looks like that's as low. That's as low as it'll go. Yep. So. about 500 um, microvolts or 0.5, 0 0.6 um, yeah so you know that's not ideal But, yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, that's the best we can do. Off to a great start, right? <laughs> oh, man. Oh, you know what? Oh. Oh, I just realized something. I may have left out a um, a uh, command to the uh, to the supply. Um, yeah. Hold on. We're going to give this another try. Let's take a look. It says V set zero, I set zero, out, off. I did not do that following step. That might be the problem. So let me give that a try. Give this, and let me do that. We'll give this another try. Okay, so sending that final command, turning the output off, did drop it. Um, you know, I don't know if substantially is the right word, but it was at 500 millivolts, and now we're at closer to 100 millivolts. So um, again, though, that's the lowest I can get it. Um, and so we'll just leave it there um, but um yeah okay so now moving on to the second step which is common mode calibration so and by the way now I see why it, it, the DPIB controller is necessary because of that final command that output off which I don't believe you can really do um, operating it locally but anyway um, this setup is similar to the um, first setup, except now we are shorting the sense um, terminals instead of the output terminals, and then also applying a um, one volt to the um, uh, the negative sense terminal and or negative yeah I mean they're shorted but the negative sense terminal and the uh, negative output terminal and another critical part is removing those local sense straps which um, are on the uh, uh, the output terminals as well and then we are going to adjust uh, R21 to a somewhere between plus or minus 20 microvolts uh, so similar to the first um, uh, the first uh, uh, adjustment um, same specs so uh, let's give this a try all right so I'm going to try and adjust R21 okay that's much better yeah that's much better
Yep. Check that out. So. I can live with that. Um, yeah. All right. Okay, so now on to the re remote read back zero calibration. Um, so just finished setting up for this, and this is kind of like a two-step procedure. I mean, two-part procedure. Um, uh, the first setup is, um, you know, you set string V set to zero, I set is five amps, and then output on. Um, you're connecting a 1K resistor to pin. It's the same setup um, as before to the to the um, the multimeter, but then you're also uh, connecting a power supply, as shown in this diagram. Um, and this is what the monstrosity that that all is. Um, so, yep, and, um, yeah, so, uh, let's, uh, and so for this first step, you're, we're going to be adjusting, um, let's see, um, adjust A8 R40, okay, gotta find out which one that is, um, so yeah, that'll be that adjustment, and then you're, we're going to run the, um, program, the power supply through a program, for part two, I'm, I'm curious to see how that'll go, and then we're making another adjustment uh, there. But, all right. Okay, so we are adjusting this uh, R40 down to 625 microvolts, plus or minus 30 microvolts. So let's see if we can accomplish that. Oh, going the wrong way. Okay, I think that is good enough. We can move on. Sorry for the weird camera angle here, but I can't really move the display far enough away from the uh, my bench. I don't have leads long enough, but right now you can see the display is toggling between 0 and 15 millivolts, which is exactly where we want it for this next step. And I can show you quickly on the... PC. So this uh, step, which again is the um, part of the readback zero calibration, um, it's starting at um, F here. So we, we entered this program into the uh, GPIB controller um, and then adjusted uh, R51 on the GPIB board, which is A8 until it toggles between 0 and 15 millivolts and um, uh, you must continue the calibration procedure throughout the completion okay alright well so that is um, what it's doing now pretty neat okay so we moved on to the next step and this is the constant voltage full-scale calibration so via the GPIB controller we've got voltage set to 60 volts, current set to 5 amps, output is on, have our multimeter connected to the uh, sense terminals on the rear panel, and we're going to be adjusting R58, uh, that's the spec, 60.0075 plus or minus 1.82 millivolts, so let's give that a try. Okay, so uh, let's see if we can adjust this to the spec um, actually yeah that's interesting so anyway
we're gonna do what we can because let me see yeah unfortunately that's the that's the best our meter can do as far as the range Yep, so, um, mm, let's see. Yeah, that's really the best we can do. Unfortunately. Yep, but um, I'm okay with that. Alright, so we moved on to the next step, which is voltage mon monitor and remote readback, full scale. Um, so the parameters on the supplier is the same, 60 volts, 5 amps, and the multimeter, however, is connected in a different location. It is this, it's set up similarly to some of the earlier steps, so the... Um, positive lead is connected to pin 3 with a 1k resistor in between and then a um, the negative is connected to the uh, common um, pin pin 4 I believe so this is the spec we are looking for 5.000625 oh again I don't know if we're going to be able to get that yeah I don't know alright We'll see what we can do here, and we'll be adjusting R57. So let's give that a try. Oh, and then it looks like we need to um, enter this uh, program as well. Oh, no, that's the next step again. I'm sorry. Yep, it's another two-step, um, two-part uh, pr um, procedure again. All right, so it looks like our... our, um, our uh, HP 3478A just isn't going to be able to cut it. Um, missing a few sig figs here. And uh, yeah, this just is not the uh, meter that you want to be using for this um, this uh, type of procedure. But it, unfortunately, it's the most accurate one I have. Um, but if you were really doing this procedure for, you know, s the right way, or you were in a lab that was more of like a metrology lab, um, well, one, if you were, you'd probably already know how to do this procedure, but, um, or you'd be familiar with doing things like this. Um, but yeah, this, this, this type of, um, the way we're doing this just wouldn't fly. Now, I'm not going to be using this supply for anything critical. I'm just doing this more just to do it. Um, you know, just be, to use the, uh, GPIB controller for the first time and just to do this video. It'll get us by for that. So, you know, that's one thing you always got to ask yourself when you're calibrating anything. Well, what what are we what am I using this piece of equipment for? Why do I need to do this calibration? Um, so you know, that that's just something to keep in mind. So, anyway, the spec is 5.000625 plus or minus 100 microvolts. Uh, so if we get this to 5.006, that'll be in the ballpark it should be good enough for our purposes. Um, so I'm going to adjust R5, R75 now, and uh, let's see what we can get here. Oh, wrong way. Oh, this one's all. This one's very finicky. All the other ones haven't been too uh, finicky, but this one. Yeah. Okay. Oh, stay there, stay there. All right. <laughs> All right, I think that'll do for our, like I said, that'll do fine. Um, we should be good with that. I'm happy with that. Okay, and then that's the final portion of the uh, voltage monitor and remote remote readback full scale cal. It's just running this program via the GPIB controller, and then 
making this adjustment with the R61 here. Now it says it'll toggle between 60 and 60.015, but the display can't even read that many sig figs, so this is what I've got it at right now. So we'll just uh, leave it at that and move on to the next step. Okay, so this is the next step, constant voltage zero calibration. So we have already sent that string of V set zero, I set five output on to the supply via the EPIB controller. And we have connected an external supply um, to the unit, which is similar to a previous setup. Um, and um, the DVM is connected to the sense outputs and we are looking for 0 plus minus 120 microvolts and we will get there by adjusting R40 so let's give that a try alright so here comes the R40 adjustment let's see what we can do here oh whoa 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 wrong oh is that negative? Oops. Another finicky one. Yeah, wow. Oh, man. Oh. Just removing it. Yep. Yeah, this one's. Come on. Yep. I... Ooh, I think that'll. Come on, bud. Just. Yeah. I think that'll do. I think that'll do. We'll keep it there. Okay, so moving on to the current monitor zero calibration. So this is the procedure. Um, send string, V set zero, I set zero, output off, already done that. Short the power supply output terminals, that's done. Attach a multimeter to common M and then a current monitor on the rear panel. And then I've already allowed it to sit for three minutes or more. And so we're gonna be adjusting R8 and here are the sp here's the spec plus or minus 25 microvolts oh again I don't know if we're gonna be able to do that <laughs> but we'll see alright okay so actually it looks like the uh, 3478 can manage that um, that set point there are enough sig figs at this uh, lower level so um, right now because right now it's fluctuating at about you know 170 microvolts um, so we should be able to get it to uh, plus or minus 25 microvolts um, so let's give that a try I'm going in the wrong direction. Whoop.
thought I had it there. Nope. Uh, well, yeah. You know what? Yeah. Yep. I think that I think I'll I, I'm happy with that. I I'm happy with that. I think that that's good enough. Yeah. All right. Okay, now on to the constant current zero calibration. Um, so connect the uh, test setup as shown, which we've done. Um, yep. And um, going to be just adjusting R29 to that spec plus or minus 350 microvolts. I still need to send that string via the GPIB controller. So let's go ahead and do that. <clears throat> okay, so again, uh, adjusting this to zero plus or minus 350 microvolts. So right now it's sitting around negative, yeah, negative 700 microvolts roughly. Um, yeah. Okay. It's another finicky one, but it's plus or minus 350 microvolts, so that's within that spec. So um, again, I think I'll leave it there, and we can move on. Okay, so um, on to the current monitor full-scale calibration. Um, so. This is the step that requires a very accurate current monitoring shunt, which I don't have. Uh, I have a um, 100 milliohm, <clears throat> um, 1 percent uh, resistor, but that's not going to cut it. So um, you know, just maybe just doing this just for the hell of it. I don't know if I'll make any adjustments. Um, and then after you connect that across the outputs, you have. Um, you're, you set the uh, supply, 5 volts, 10 amps, um, and uh, then yeah, you touch the multimeter to the rear panel, um, as we've done before, <clears throat> and then we take an initial reading, um, so that is what we have going on here, so 4.9976, we'll jot that down, and then it provides some the neck, the spec, because then you're going to connect that um, the DVM across the resistor itself, and that is going to be what you adjust R29, R9 to. Um, so 0.2 times the initial reading plus or minus one millivolt. So let's just take a look. Okay, and now for the final part of this step, um, current monitor full scale. Um, we connect the multimeter across the resistor um, or current monitoring shunt and we should be getting um, our initial reading times 0 0.200 which was 0 0.99952 plus or minus one millivolt and, and actually we are pretty much well we just were we just jumped out it was in spec before now it's drifting out but I am not going to make any adjustment because we don't aren't using the um, an accurate enough resistor anyway but uh, looks like it's um, still pretty close to being within spec using this inaccurate resistor so I'm just gonna leave that there okay and now this uh, constant current full-scale Cal um, I'm a little confused by this step because there's not much different here than the second portion of the step prior. 
um, you know, you're, you're changing the, um, your, the, D, the, the, the DMM is, is across the um, current monitoring shunt like it was before. Um, and then, you know, we were, it was at roughly one volt. Um, and so now it's saying to adjust R55 so that it it's, it's to brings it in to 100 millivolts plus or minus 100 microvolts. I mean, it's still at one volt roughly. So I'm going, again, I'm going to skip this adjustment because we're not using um, a resistor that is accurate enough for this procedure. But yeah, best left alone, especially because I don't really understand how that's, you know. Yep. All right, we can move on. Not much left. So um, this is actually the second to last step. Um, you've got this resistant programming, resistance programming, full scale calibration. Um, so we can take a look at that too. But yeah, this is the power limit calibration. Um, so I've uh, connected the unit to a uh, my uh, Sencor PR57, which is a isolation transformer, but also a variac. Um, and I've adjusted the output, so it is now reading about 104, 105 volts. Okay. So um, we've turned the power limit um, R25 pot fully counterclockwise. I have the electronic load hooked up, set to 10 amps, and also um, we've sent the string via the GPIB controller. So uh, voltage set to 23, I set a uh, current set to 10.2, and the output is on. And so we're going to be adjusting. R25 until the CV LED on the front panel turns on. Right now, the overrange LED is lit. Okay, so we're going to make that adjustment and see what happens. Okay, let's uh, give this adjustment a go. Um, I'm also monitoring the uh, electronic load. Okay, so I guess that's where it should be. CV is lit. Um, yep. Oh wow, interesting. The uh, voltage on the uh, variable supply dropped very low. Let's just take a look at this real quick. I don't want to run it like this too long. Check that out. Oh boy. Yeah, let me uh Yeah. It just powered itself off. Might have set this guy a bit too low. Yeah. It it literally just powered itself off. Um So there you go. Yeah, this auto, um, this Sencor, uh, I need to calibrate it. It, it may have been off by um, a few volts um, lower than it should have been, which could have explained why that happened. But, <laughs> yeah, it, it, I don't know if you guys caught that, but it, it, it literally dropped to, like, 90 volts uh, when we made that final adjustment. But, um, yeah, we got one more to go. All right, let's not try to kill it before then. Okay, the final step of the calibration. So this is 
the resistance programming full scale cal alright so we've already set the output off um, gonna do, uh, we've uh, connected a 2 kilo ohm resistor to these outputs on the rear panel adjusted the mode switches and um, also connected our multimeter to the same terminals on the rear panel and so we're going to be adjusting R23 to this spec 2.5 volts plus or minus 4 millivolts so let's give it a go and we can wrap this up alright so again we are looking at um, okay so first things first I think I have my leads um, reversed so uh, all right um, but yeah and so we are looking at 2.5 volts plus or minus 4 millivolts so let's give us a, give us a try And this resistor doesn't need to be anything special. I believe it's just a 5% resistor. Only the current monitoring shunt resistor, that one resistor needed to be very, very accurate to do this procedure. Okay, I mean, we were already in spec, um, so we're pretty much at this would if we were at between 2.504 and 2.496, that would have been anywhere in between there would have been within spec. So we are good. I am going to leave it there. We can put the cover back on this guy and wrap things up. Uh, real quick, before I put the cover back on, if anyone was wondering, I did replace those reefa caps so that is one of them right there one of the replacements but there are several others that are hidden that I did replace as well um, so there you go well y'all there we have there you have it um that is the full calibration well almost full of this uh, HP 6038A um, I really enjoy working on HP products they just you know, they, they really just make them so, they're so easy to service and repair. Um, yeah, it's, it's, I, that's why I have a lot of HP equipment. Um, but yeah, it, you know, this wasn't the, I'm sure this wasn't the most entertaining video. Um, but, you know, somebody requested that I follow up on, on this um, HP supply. And if, that goes for any of you guys if you want to see something in particular you want to see me work on something um, I'm happy to take suggestions on on other videos I should do you know by all means um, but um yeah so just a couple things you saw in this video that I used some standards that were not um, up to the required specs for the calibration so for example using my HP um, 3478 uh, multimeter when it didn't have enough si significant figures for some of the uh, measurements or using that um, uh, shunt resistor that wasn't um, accurate enough those are really things you never want to do when you're performing um, a calibration so for example I'm a lab instrumentation engineer at a biotech company I calibrate things all the time incubators centrifuges uh, the list goes on and on I would never perform a calibration like that this is my own personal equipment it's not it's only going to be used probably for my hobbies um, or for troubleshooting at work 
not for any type of calibration. And if I ever decide I want to do it, use it for things like that, I will redo this calibration with the proper equipment. But that's just one caveat I wanted to mention. I just did this calibration just because it gave us a chance to use this um, GPIB controller, which I had never used before, and to control one of these um, pieces of equipment with it. Uh, that was the main reason why I did it. Um, so just keep that in mind, you know, if you're looking to, if you're watching this, um, as a, as a, um, you know, for, for, as a tutorial, um, for working on one of these, uh, you know, just, just make sure you're using the, uh, the correct, uh, calibration standards to, to do so. Um, but yeah, uh, if you're looking for performance, the performance tests that's in part two um so because actually that's with the service manual it then goes into the performance checks after the calibration but we've already done those and they actually looked really well before the calibration so i just wanted to bring those two things um up but uh yeah i hope you guys enjoyed this and um we'll uh i'll catch you guys next time all right